Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of DigiLaw Collection Computer History Series. In this one I want to talk about this. Well, not actually this, but this, which is the Texas Instruments or TI 99-4A computer. Like usual though, before speaking about the computer, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the company behind it, Texas Instruments. The company was fund, founded in 1951 near Dallas in Texas and it has a long history of developing uh, electronic products from uh, navigation systems to computers, calculators and so on. For example, by 1958 they have developed or co-developed I should say the uh, first integrated circuit and the reason I say co-developed because an engineer called Robert Noyce that at the time was working for uh, Fairchild Semiconductor also came up with an integrated circuit around the same time. In 1960s also they developed uh, the ever so popular 7400 uh, TTL uh, chip series the AND gates, NOR gates and, and so on bus drivers and those are used even today. I have here for example a good selection of 74 LS integrated chips. Um, in, uh, by 1970s, they started working on a calculator line uh, series, um, and who hasn't used a TI calculator? Calculators like this made by TI were very popular in schools in the 80s and the 90s and even the 2000s. Um, by uh, at the end of that decade, in 1979, they entered the computer market with their first computer called uh, TI-99-4. Uh, it wasn't very successful at the time and they followed up next year with TI-99-4A, uh, which is the one we have right here. And as time passed by, they developed, uh, in the 80s, they developed other computers uh, such as the 99-2, uh, the Compact Computer 40, and because the IBM PC um, became more and more popular, they've also moved uh, on to produce um, compatible IBM PC computers, which were more or less successful. Um, and they, they kept doing that, they, they, built, they built laptops in, in the 90s, and they sold their business eventually. Uh, but one computer I want to talk about that's uh, somewhat interesting is the, is the TI Explorer. The TI Explorer was a uh, Lisp machine aimed at um, developing artificial intelligence systems. It was based on the MIT Lisp machine architecture, uh, similar to Symbolics machines. And he, um, among other things that was interesting about it, it was also used in the NU bus, uh, bus architecture which of course, as we know, was very popular with uh, Apple machines at the time. This time I also want to speak a little bit, a little bit about what makes the uh, TI-99-4A uh, special and sets it a little bit apart from the other mini computers at the time, which is really the processor inside it, that, uh, um, which is based on the TI-990 series. The TI-990 processor series were actually a continuation from early mini-computers processors that Texas Instruments produced, uh, such as the TI-960 and TI-980. Um, it has few uh, innovative features that um, sets it apart from the other processors that were at the time used in mini-computers. So, for one, for example, it is a 16-bit processor, and that, was, that, that made it fairly performant for the time. It was, was, was native 16-bit registers and, and data paths and such. The other thing that uh, was interesting about its design is that um, because the, it could use fast uh, RAM uh, memory, it had this implementation of what we today call register frames. Uh, basically, what it means is that the registers that the processor used were not uh, hard, hard uh, wired in the processor itself, but rather was just memory location. So uh, the processor had something called a workspace pointer register that I would say, you know, this portion of memory are the registers for this current process. 
Um, that made very easily, um, uh, allowed very easily to change between uh, tasks by just moving the, the, the workspace pointer to a different portion of memory. Nowadays, this is a fairly used technique. Like I said, we call it um, register frames. We have the concept of virtual registers nowadays in modern processors. And that was all actually used uh, back in the late 70s on, in the TI-990 processor. And in fact, there are only three hard-coded registers, uh, hardware registers inside, inside a CPU. Everything else was uh, memory mapped. Um, the other thing is that it, also, it had 15 um, 16 bit registers, which is way more than the MOS 6502 offered or the, uh, the Z80 processor had, um, and that allowed it, um, um, allowed programmers to um, code fairly easily. And another thing that helped with that is that the instruction set was fairly orthogonal. In, in, in other words, um, you, you, could, you could read uh, and write uh, memory or registers or index memory uh, via registers uh, by, by pretty much using any kind of uh, operand combination. Therefore, code writing for the TI-990 um, was actually not that hard. On the side, the unit is fairly simple. Um, you have the uh, power supply port, uh, the display port, and joystick ports, and then you also have an expansion port on the right side. The cartridges um, are inserted on top. They go just like this. And the on-off button is here. This surface here tends to get fairly hard during uh, operation. Um, it is normal power supply that comes uh, with the unit, fairly heavy, used for the time. And it has an external uh, video modulator to which I attach, uh, attach this um, antenna uh, plug. Um, so that I can connect it to a uh, normal TV. Inside, the motherboard of the TI is very simple. In the center, the biggest chip on, the, on it is the TS-990 processor itself. And, uh, the CPU memory, which is 206 bytes, are to the right, the two chips uh, that run memory there. The video processor, the VDP, is up on the left side, and the memory for it, the VDP memory, are from the, all those 41116 RAM chips. The ROM for the BIOS for, and everything else is to the CPU, and finally we have the interface chip that allows the processor to talk to the keyboard, sound, and so on. Out of the box, if you do not have any uh, cartridge inserted, you are greeted with this screen upon which you press any button, it offers you to uh, use TI Basics by pressing 1, like that. And then here you can, you can write programs, so you can do something like this. Like that. Now, if you have a cartridge installed, uh, from the main menu, you will actually be offered the choice between TI Basic or, in my case here, Video Chat. So if I press 2, that loads the game from the cartridge. This is one of my favorite games for TI, actually. And one of the first ones to be coded. So, let's say we want to play a beginner game. In this case, we play uh, black. No, we play white, looks like. So let's move D2, D4. Um, there you go. Alright, so this is it for this episode, folks. Uh, the TI 99 slash 4 and slash 4A uh, variant were pretty good machines for the time. They came with a uh, decent amount of software uh, for them, and um, even, even larger um, uh, extension and, and uh, a pro product surrounding uh, the computer. Um, it's pretty fun and it's fairly easy to obtain from eBay uh, for not very uh, high prices. So if you do get one, uh, it will serve you well and you'll have a lot of fun. See you next time.